of Miami um, CRA into order. Today is Tuesday, January 8th, 2013, sitting at the North Miami City Hall Council Chambers, 776 Northeast 125th Street, sitting on the second floor. To begin our meeting, I'm going to ask everyone, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. A Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for okay thank you you may be seated um miss secretary can you do roll call please sure. uh -huh. commissioner sterrell here commissioner galvin chairman beer here commissioner marcellus here commissioner blinn we have a quorum. The record reflects we have a quorum to conduct the business of the people uh, this afternoon for the North Miami CRA. Uh, Mr. CRA coordinator, any uh, changes, amendments to the agenda? No changes. No changes. No amendments. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of November 13th? Move to approve. Okay. Has been moved. Seconded. Okay. Anyone do wishes to work? No. Hearing none. We have two items for review. Uh, tab one. Request from Norgetown Cleaner and Propane Gas to obtain additional funds of 30000 for the resurfacing and the parking lot and curb and for hurricane rolling shutters. Located at 1005 Northwest 119th Street, North Miami, Florida, 33168. Okay, is the applicant pre present? Yes. Okay, can we get a brief overview exactly uh, what <coughs> are you going to do and what the money would do? Uh, we know we have given you some funding in the past, so we want to make sure that the money is well spent. Uh, let, let the record reflect that uh, Commissioner Blinn is now present for this meeting. My name is Abdul Azak. Property address is 1005 Northwest 119th Street. It looks like this is not working. Go go to the next one, please. Yes. My name is Abdul Azak at 1005 Northwest 119th Street, North Miami, 33168. Uh, my architect will give you some overview on the project. We almost finished around 80, 85% of the project. Almost just the parking lot left to be finishing it and the rolling shutters. Uh, Victor Morales is our architect. Hi, Victor Morales, uh, 70 Northwest 105th Street, Miami Shores, Florida. Nothing Can you hear me? Because I don't know if this is working. Right. It's working, we're here. Okay, right. okay, beautiful. Uh, you should have, uh, Abdul has submitted uh, a revised budget for the project. It's not working. It's working. We hear it's, it's working. What? Uh, oh. You guys have signals back there. You good? No. Okay, okay we're good. Yes. Okay. Um, what I can do is uh, <coughs> give you a quick overview, and then if you want to go over some of the line items, we we are familiar. Okay. With, with the project, I mean, we all have been here since uh, the beginning. I know. And not only that, you know, um, you know, since I moved to Miami from New York, I saw what you turned this place to be and what it is today. Uh, just, you know, if you take a couple minutes and tell me exactly uh, what the additional thirty thousand dollars that you are requesting, you know, um, I know you're going to put it to good use. Just give us a brief mm -hmm. overview. Then from okay. there, we're going to move forward. I mean, as I said, you know, that that area, this is the shot in the arm that it thinks it badly need. I mean, this is something we should have done years ago. Uh, Northwest 7th Avenue, anything on the west side, you know, we, mm -hmm. we need to put some money there. So um, I see that, you know, he, he came in, he put his own, own money into it, and we pretty much, you know, um, given him exactly what he needs to make this a very successful area. And I think, you know, this is the kind of lift that we need in that place uh, to make sure that we could attract, you know, other businesses to come to the area. <coughs> Uh, essentially, uh, the, the cost increases had to do with two things primarily. One thing had to do with uh, the Department of Planning and Zoning. Uh, they really felt that, I don't know if you see it on this 
pictures, but there's a tank, uh, an exposed. You have to speak into the mic. You uh, see it right here, right? We, yes, but whatever you're saying has to be into the mic. Uh, that they wanted that removed from the site and put underground. That's a tremendous cost. Um, but uh, Abdul agreed to that, and they said they were going to give him 18 months to do that after the project was done. I, me and the engineer, myself and the engineer, uh, convinced Abdul that if you're going to do a parking lot and then come back in 18 months and tear it up to put this underground tank, it, it doesn't make any sense. So that was one of the cost uh, overrun situations. Um, the other one had to do with the fact that we didn't do the original design in its fullest. We had to change the design uh, a bit and still have an impactful corner, and that brought in some costs. And the third thing was uh, building codes decided that you were improving the building enough that the existing storefronts needed to be protected with hurricane shutters, um, something I don't quite agree with, but it's there. And so those are the three items. You know, and uh, okay. somebody wants so I could go through no. more detail. Now we we, okay. we have that. Um, anyone wishes to her to be heard on agenda item one? Hearing none. Uh, Commissioner Blen. Uh, do we follow the requirements that, that uh, our attorney Steve Zelkowitz uh, indicated in his memo? Uh, Waiver yes. of the eighty thousand dollar maximum grant. We, we're going to need a waiver if, if we grant uh, before we grant this request we will need to yeah. address a waiver for to go over the 50 yeah, 50 requirements. The waiver is recommended on the condition that three year maintenance period of the grant agreement be increased to five years. Right. That's going to be okay. That's that is correct. So we're going to meet all those requirements. Yes sir. Is that alright with you Mr. Zelkowitz? Um, yes Commissioner Blunt. I, I would uh, suggest if you're going to approve this item that you um, approve entering into an amendment to the existing grant agreement <coughs> um, uh, allowing for the additional thirty thousand um, dollars for the items uh, that they've requested um, also um, waiving the eighty thousand dollar maximum amount um, and going to eighty six thousand and um, uh, including a, an increase in the uh, the maintenance period from three to five years right. all right so that's been agreed upon yes sir all right thank you Thank you, sir. Commissioner Marcellus? Uh, yes. I think we, we meet the requirement right now, Mr. Appen, and that's correct. And I went myself to that place, and yes, Mr. Abdul, I think we talked, and when I visited the place, and really, I think that's a, a one thing I, the, one, the only way I can put it is you are really a gentleman and a true businessman. Because you not only take care your person of your property but you also do orders yes, in the entrance to make that corner look beautiful and I think that's really that's something that uh, we, that's the kind of businessmen we probably need in the city Appreciate they not only selfish <coughs> just for, the, for that little things by Appreciate themselves but they think about for the city as a whole Appreciate and for that I really appreciate your effort and I'm ready to go Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let, you, let sir. the record reflect Commissioner Garvin is here in the meeting. Commissioner Garvin? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize for my tardiness. Traffic signals were a little off, and then uh, somebody's parked in my spot outside, so I had to drive around Oops. the block a couple times. <laughs> That's okay. Um, again, thank you for being here tonight and uh, bringing forth this project. It's looking better and better every time I drive past it. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, I guess my question is for staff. Is there any matching funds that are needed for this project, or is this simply a... Uh, we need a waiver. That's it. A waiver for the 50-50, because uh, at the end, he's going to get more than $80,000, which is the maximum for the business support program. Okay, but so it's a, it's a waiver. I, I know what the matter is. The matter is we're, we're, we're being asked to waive the threshold right. that we can give money. Right. Am I correct, Mr. C.I.? Can I clarify for staff, please? The, the waiver is only to the maximum grant amount. Um, the Which is $6,000. Six yes, it's a $6,000 increase. Mm -hmm. The 50-50 the um, requirement is met 
um, because uh, I, my understanding from staff is a revised scope of work was submitted, which will be yes, included in the amendment to the grant agreement, showing that there's at least $172,000 worth of improvements being made to the property. So the money that we're being asked to uh, award this evening is just a straight up award. There's no matching involved. No, there is, he is matching. The, the, prior, the prior grant was based on a scope of work of $112,000. So we gave $56,000, which is the 50-50. Okay. So now they're asking for $30,000 more, bringing the total grant to 86000 The applicant, the owner, is putting in more than 172000 which is to the project cost is one hundred and seventy two. It's more than that. So there is a 50 50 match. Okay. The CRA is putting in 70, 70 uh, a, a, excuse me, 86. 86. They're putting in more than 86. Okay. And is that reflected in the uh, page of information that we were given here with the invoices and stuff like that? Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Oh, there was, an, there was an addendum? What was that? It's in your file. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Keep up the Thank you. Work. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Stereo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm glad to see that we have a consensus up here to support the project that I really encourage you to do. So good luck. I'm ready Thank to you. vote. Appreciate to see the finishing of this project. Thank you very much. Okay, can I get a motion to approve with the uh, uh, with the uh, with the attorney recommendation? Move to approve. Okay, has Second. been made. Has been seconded. Anyone wishes to work it or no? Hearing none. Motion passed, Thank sir. You. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you very just want to make something clear quickly. I know I've been to your place yes, a lot often. <coughs> remember, remember we talked about the neon lights and yes, I sir. told you that it was a great idea. Yes, sir. You know, I just want to make sure because sometimes, you know, we have drama queens that saying just because I tell you that it may be giving you advice. So just want to make sure that I gave you advice that it was a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> have a great day. Thank Top two. Request from PI Beauty Express Inc to renovate the interior of the existing establishment. Okay, this is item two. I think there was uh, uh, briefly a few things that wasn't clear and we finally got that cleared up. Uh, my understanding is the applicant is on its way, but Mr. Matt, uh, Mr. Uh, CRA Director, just give us a brief background information. Again, as I said, Northwest 7th Avenue need that shot in the arm. And we finally getting that done. I mean, it looks like, you know, Burger King was the first place to actually, you know, spend some real money there for your tropical. And I think, you know, Northwest 7th Avenue uh, really needs some help, you know, from the city of North Miami. And I think the issue, you know, we see what's happening at the flea market. Uh, my understanding is that, you know, the owner of the flea market, you know, got some issues going on there. Basically, he's... Um, yearly bill is about you know sixty thousand dollars, and he got tenants in there for about thirty thousand dollars. So he's not really getting the money there uh, that he needs in order to run the flea market. But at the same time, you know there's a lot of issues going on, and I think you know we really need to get down to Northwest Seventh Avenue and get a lot of things done there. So again, I see another great project that is going on Northwest Seventh Avenue. Um, this is an issue that. You know, I mean, Mr. Uh, CRA attorney, we talked about this, you know, trying to get more businesses on Northwest 7th Avenue, jumpstart that area, put some real money there. I know we talked about um, even the county has that Northwest 7th Avenue CRA, which, you know, I think, you know, this is the time to get it done. So I'm glad to see that we are going out there. I'm not sure if we're going out there, if they're coming to us, but, you know, uh, the, the work is getting uh, done in that area. So. Uh, Mr. Manager. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Mayor and Council, or should I say, uh, Board and uh, Chair. Um, on, on this particular um, case here. Um, yeah, just one second. You are free to go, you're done. Okay, okay Mr. <laughs> Mr. Zekowitz, we send you the check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, Happy New Year again. Not, not, not seeing you again, you know. And I'll stop by again to say hello. Not, not to drink any poor pain, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye. As, as you know, there, there really is not funding. We're finding funding for all of these cases. We're finding additional funding. Um, and in some of these cases, um, we, we try to bring um, individuals that we feel that can sustain or be sustainable. 
In this particular applicant, I have been dealing with her, I, I would say, uh, according to my records, it goes back into July, uh, August. Um, there, when she first came to this, uh, to the advisory board, uh, there were some things that were not in place. Um, over the past 30 to 45 days, I've gone out there on 7th Avenue. I've spoke to the business owner, or, or sh should I say the, the, the building owner, mm -hmm. which is different from the applicant. And I want to make sure that we separate. They're not related in any way. They're not related. They're separate. The building owner did receive CRA funds for the old Carville ice cream place. Is it at that? It it's um I'm still I can't yeah. really determine if it is uh, attached but the folio numbers are the same and they are there is a firewall. Um we did give money to that particular building owner to renovate the old Carville ice cream. So that agreement is with the building owner. Um, for one portion of the building. For one portion of the building. What we have now is a tenant that's coming. The tenant needs money for construction purposes to take two bays belonging to that same building owner to bring forth this project. Um, what I did was I looked at the project, I looked at who the applicant was, they've been in the business for 25 years. Um, I did not want to bring somebody who was just coming out of cosmetology, somebody who was not a new business owner. Um, I wanted somebody who has been a prior business owner, who has gone through some challenges, but their experiences of 25 years um, and what they want to do, I felt that um, it was somebody worthwhile to bring before you for consideration. This um, individual is asking for several waivers. One is um, the amount of money uh, in our current program. They only, uh, they only could, they can only get up to 50 percent. They're asking for more than 50 percent. Um, the other, the other issue is, is that we don't uh, give money to new startups. It has to be an existing business. But we have done that before. We don't give it to um, uh, a business that, uh, we don't give it to a company, we give it to the building owner. We have done that before. Uh, we, uh, we did that with Mocha Cafe. Um, Mocha Cafe, um, uh, the owner is Clark, um, think of his last Reynolds. name, Reynolds. Reynolds. Reynolds, but we gave it to the tenant and we gave more than 50%. So there's several waivers. We've done this with Poyo Tropical. I guess the point that I'm making, there are several waivers in here that we have waived in the past. This would not be the first time that we are, have waived something. Um, these things have to be done case by case. It has to be done by location. There's a whole lot of variables to take into consideration. I took in consideration that shopping center. I took in consideration the locale of 7th Avenue. It sits between 119th and 125th. I looked at what the county has done south of us. We need to move forward. We need to move northward. We need to keep the momentum going. Uh, I have sit with Commissioner Monestine and his office about what are we doing about 7th Avenue. We have to do something. So knowing this board, certainly knowing that we have to do something, we did something different for Poyo Capital that broke all of our rules. We, we, did, we created a lot of different waivers to get them in there. Um, from cons it's supposed to be tied to construction. Um, the lane, we tied it to employment. The fact that if they just hire X amount of residents to be North Miami because we know that that is a very challenging area. We have to get something in. So this applicant comes before you tonight at a location that 
Uh, I want you to be aware of the building owner has a current agreement. Uh, they are in the process since 2008 in dealing with CRA funding. Mm -hmm. We're working with that building owner. It's a shopping center. It's a very strategically important located shopping center. Uh, these are two bays. These are two separate businesses that will be one. Um, I, I feel that we should move forward or consider doing something there. Uh, the building owner does not have anybody else knocking on their door to say, I want to do this. It w it, if we had options, I would certainly say there are options and maybe we won't, don't want to do this one. There, there is no other options. Um, there are other beauty salons in the area. I think that what this building owner, what this particular applicant wants to do is going to be very unique. Uh, they're offering a variety of services that won't be unique to the other salons so that they're not trying to take them out competitively, uh, they're, but they're just trying to coexist with already is there. So I looked at their business proposal and what they would like to do. Uh, I know that the recommendation from the legal side um, was um, was to give you information. Uh, however, um, Mr. Zelkowitz did indicate that staff would be coming up with something, presenting something, which is what I'm presenting to you tonight, um, mm -hmm. is that I, I really strongly feel that this particular shopping strip needs some assistance. Okay. It really needs some assistance um, to move forward to get the help. Yes, yeah. they've gotten help, but if we we have to help it, we have to help it succeed. We're going to have to help the ice cream shop. We're going to have to help that strip. It's just str strategically located that we have to do something. Um, I know the CRA advisory board had concerns that you should be aware of when you're making your decision. They were concerned um, that the that particular strip has already received money. Mm -hmm. They felt that the money should not go interior-wise. Uh, I differed with them because I felt that if we facade pick uh, uh, fix up a building and if it's fixed up cosmetically um, I there's no guarantee that they're going to get tenants I named places on US 1 and Taft Street Sheridan where you got new shopping centers someone came in and purchased it built a new shopping center it has no tenants here in this situation we have to work according to the situation. We have to work according to the condition. We have a tenant that wants to come in. I, I think if we have the anchor for a tenant with a five-year contract, I think that at least we're, we have something. I got the building owner to give them a five-year contract. They have been very lenient over the past 90 <coughs> days in, uh, on the rent issue pending this board's decision. Um, last month, the applicant wanted to come before you. I wanted to personally look at their proposal. I wanted to make sure that they were incorporated. I wanted to make sure that they had everything together uh, and, and including me personally talking to the building owner to give them another 30 days to find out what this board was going to do. So um, okay. that's why they're coming before you now because I don't think that I can buy any more time with the business, business owner. I also spoke with the business owner about getting the current project that they have from CRE funding up and going. So they've had some challenges. We're working with them to get them through. Um, so it, we, we've had a little bit more of a hands-on approach other than just being a funding approach. We need to get tenants there. This can be a dead shopping center. If we have a dead strip at the time that we have 
uh, Poyo Tropical $250,000 at the time that we have an opportunity when FDOT is going to make some changes we need to we need to be in sync with those changes mm -hmm. uh, so that's just my recommendation but also I wanted to fairly give you what the CRA advisory boards concerns were uh, they are legit they are legit concerns but um, we have to make a decision and uh, and with okay. you all having all this information um, the decision and the hard job is up to you no problem thank you um, mr. secretary would you please read this um, tab two into the record for me request from PI Beauty Express Inc to renovate the interior of the existing establishment 12350-12360 Northwest 7th Avenue, North Miami, Florida 33168. Thank you. Um, as I said, you know, this is again another project that should be happening on Northwest 7th Avenue. Um, somehow, legal seem to be saying that I would not recommend those waivers, but from a policy standpoint, seem to be saying that we should grant you know the waivers now uh, legal I, are you saying that there's no circumstances that we have grant those waivers in the past if we have grant them in the past then I don't understand why legal would recommend uh, for us not to grant those waivers because we have done them in the past um, let's go with the first waiver uh, the first one is uh, the building owner we have done that in the past that's not that's not something new right you're asking uh, my Mr. Chairman, um, my understanding is the only time we've done that is with the Mocha Cafe grant for the restaurant in Mr. Reynolds' building. And again, with my memo, I mean, just to, to back up a second, my job here is different from the director's job. I'm to provide you with legal advice based upon the current program guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're here time and again providing grants which is very helpful in redevelopment um, we have certain guidelines and we continue to waive them in this particular case yes we have granted a waiver one time previous to my knowledge to the first request which is that a commercial rehabilitation grant is only available to the owner of an eligible commercial building my concern with granting it another time is that the more times we grant it the more hard press it will be not to grant it down the road if someone asks for it. In other words, it's a slippery slope. And once you start granting these waivers time and time again, it, it, it becomes, you know, commonplace. So if the policy is going to be to provide this grant to tenants, my suggestion would be merely why don't you just amend your program guidelines so we're not Yeah, but waivers. one time every two years, that's not a slippery slope. I mean, this is just, well, you know, once in a while. The last time we did it was um, about two years ago, and now it's coming to us, and it's not even that much. You well, know, that's one. Um, the second waiver, uh, which is the within five-year period, um, one, you know, that's going to expire um, within the next, I don't know, 10, 11, 10 months, 10, 11 months, um, the five-year. Um, we have done that. Um, in the past, and this is not, although it's the same building with the same folio number, and I don't understand why we got, you know, one folio number for two separate areas and with two s different addresses because, you know, there's one, two, three, five, zero, one, two, three, six, zero, but we still got the same folio number. So this is another area that would be upgrade and bring about some changes on Northwest 7th Avenue. Well, I, I mean, if you're asking me why it has one folio number, it has one folio number because it's a single owner. It's one piece of property. It's platted as one piece of property, and that's why it has a single folio. But besides that, I mean, m my concern is, and I'm not familiar with the property, is that if there are more bays or there are more bays in the property, mm -hmm. that those tenants will come in and ask for $80,000. The Carvel ice cream store may come in and ask for $80,000 again. So I'm just <coughs> asking, you know, for some definitive guidelines. <coughs> and I'm not saying that you can't waive them. I'm not saying it's not legal. But, you know, as your legal counsel, 
I would certainly suggest the most prudent um, path of uh, you know behavior when it comes to approving waivers from time to time because while we have done it in the past again they were for larger scale projects polio tropical mocha cafe 50 state security um, I, I'm not telling you it's illegal but from a practice standpoint the more times you do it the more hard pressed you're going to be to say no in, in the future when someone asks for okay. it, even with the same property. But we just grant one, and you did not recommend not to pull that one. Which one was that? The one we, the waiver we just granted to North. It's an it's an existing grant to the owner. Right, but it, it's, it's a waiver that we are. Uh, it's a different waiver. It's but uh, we're talking about waivers. We're talking about different waivers. I understand that, but we're talking about waivers and. The reason why we're moving away from, you know, the guidelines is because we want to grant waivers. I know there are different kind of waivers. So mm -hmm. if your instruction is to get, you know, from this board, you know, um, uh, some guidelines or some new guidelines, so that would include those waivers. Yeah, we could always work with that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we just grant a waiver and now we're about to grant another one. You know, this is the way I see it. It's a different waiver, but how could you recommend not approve this waiver, but you recommend approve the other I'll waiver? I'll tell you why. Because that particular waiver as to the maximum grant amount has been waived probably, I would say, somewhere between six and ten times already. So it's no longer a waiver. It's part of the guidelines. It's, it's, I would be very hard-pressed to recommend not to approve a $6,000 increase, which is, and you had pointed out, it's only $6,000. Uh -huh. Um, to that particular project when we have waived the maximum amount on, on many <laughs> occasions, I would say. Okay. So but it's still, it's still a waiver. Yes, of course it is. Okay. I'm not arguing that it's not a waiver. No problem. Uh, co just one second. Commissioner Gavin. Oh, well, thank you. Happy um, New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I've got a series of questions. Um, Mr. Zelkowitz, when yes, was the first you heard of this request? This request was on an agenda two months ago, initially, okay. and was sent back to um, staff for further development at that time. Okay. Mr. Johnson, why was this put on the agenda today and on the CRA Advisory Committee agenda yesterday? Why not wait till February? Um, uh, as, as I stated before, uh, Councilman, that basically the landlord we're running out of time with the landlord. But you just said in your earlier presentation tonight, nobody's knocking on the door to build anything here, and that's why we should approve this. So which is it? Nobody's knocking, we should approve this, or they're in a hurry, we should approve this? Well, when I said nobody's knocking, there's not another applicant uh, coming to the landlord uh, asking to take over those bays. However, the landlord uh, wants some sort of commitment uh, it, it's been going on for a while. So uh, she has <coughs> been very lenient in her uh, rent agreement uh, to get a commitment and with the payments for 90 days. So back in November, we, the landlord kind of put up, hey, you know, I need to know what you're going to do. It's either you're in, you're out. So what happened in December, I spoke with the landlord to let her know that this was not the applicant's fault, that there was some documentation, um, the <coughs> three proposals, having her corporation paper um, being the same as on the applic as the rent application. There were some technical errors that this was not prepared to come before you. It sounds so like you've invested a lot of personal time. I mean, you've got a big city to run and a CRA. You've personally, clearly invested a lot of time on this particular project. How did it first come to your attention? It first came to my attention. Um, the applicant felt that she, that she had came unprepared and that she wanted me to look at it because it was not prepared. She wanted to be prepared. She wanted to know what is it that I'm not doing right because she felt like the advisory board did not completely understand the project. So I looked at it. So the advisory board understood the project last night? The advisory board understood the project last night. What was their vote on this item? Five three. In favor or opposed? Opposed. So the advisory board that understood voted 
to decline this request. Yeah, the advisory board did not like the fact that the owner of the building has already received grant money. Uh, they felt that um, in their interpretation, by giving it to this applicant, you're giving it to the building owner again, and they were just adamantly opposed to that. Well, let's address that issue. If the uh, applicant, who I believe must be the woman that Mr. Perdant was motioning to when she walked in, um, if the applicant were to go out of business, God forbid, in three months, you said she's had troubles at other businesses before she got here, she might want to get on the record and clarify that, but if she were to go out of business, in theory, three months from now, what happens to all of the money that we've just invested in this property? Uh, that That's something that we experience in anything that we give away through the CRA. It doesn't come back to the CRA, it stays with the owner of the property? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, if if uh, MOCA goes out of business, that's why we try to bring you applicants that we feel that can sustain, be sustainable. Uh, the 25 years experience, a prior business owner, and it wasn't going out of business if she sold. She had two other businesses and she sold them both. Okay, you had said she had troubles with other businesses. Um, well, uh, I, I can elaborate on that. Uh, she had family um, issues, uh, and I questioned her because I know I thought you all would question me with this applicant. She told me that, and she should speak for herself, but basically she had some family issues. She had an opportunity to sell, and she decided to sell and to scale back. My concern was to her, not only for you all, but for me as a CRA director, how do I know that you're going to be here three years from now. Me, me making sure that the landlord is going to give a five-year agreement is only one component. Um, how do I know that you're going to be here? How do I know that we're going to get the su sustainability out of these funds? Um, and she was able to satisfy me in my interview to present to you all. I, I'm satisfied based upon my, my interview with her there, um, there's no backup information on the finances that she has, the money that she has to match this even, let alone how to stay in business. What did she present to you that was so convincing? Uh, the fact that her business proposal, uh, the fact that she has been in the business for 25 years. Um, but there's no, there's no finances in the business proposal. I mean, I could certainly put this together, but how do you know that she has the you know, um, 54000 or 80000 to match this? They, they have to spend the money first. So we, we're, we reimburse. She has right. to spend the money first. If she spends 30 then we give fifteen uh, to whatever amount, up to the amount that you approve, if it is approved. So if, if her construction cost is $108,000, if, if that's what they say it's going to be, then as they start to do the work and pour the permits, we monitor that. So if the electrical is 15000 and they do the work, then they come in, they submit the invoice. She has to pay the fifteen. We look at it. We give her back 7500 So that's how that would go. So this, if the applicant cannot spend the money, then they don't get it. And, and, and you're asking a very good question because this is why we have money left over. This is why money was allocated in the past and we have money there because somewhere down the road the applicants that came in, um, we granted them the money but they could, for whatever reason, they could not afford to proceed with the project because they have to spend their money first. So what we've been finding is, and this is how we have money that we don't have, we're going back to those applications is why didn't you do this job? Why well, don't have the money? Well, why didn't you notify us? Or, you know, well, how long is it going to take you? And we're experiencing the same thing with the existing building owner with the ice cream place. They wanted to get, they, we required them to get storm impact windows. They had to get that. You experienced the same thing with the gentleman, the prior applicant. Uh, they go through building and zoning and all of a sudden, that Durham has a requirement. Building and zoning has a requirement. You got to put your tank underground. These people have to spend the money first prior to us giving it to them. So, no, we don't have the financials. Uh, we don't know where they're going to get their money from. I, when I questioned the prior applicant, what are you getting your money from? 
I'm getting it from family. I'm getting, I don't go to a bank. It's against my oath, it's religious oath. So, but they have to spend their money first. So if we approve this and this applicant can't not come up with 54,000, we don't spend our money, it's only a reimbursable and it's done in increments. Something on that. Sure, sure. Do you, have you experienced that um, a business owner starting spending the money and then they find out they don't have enough to finish it? So what happened? We lost our part or? What you will experience is what you experience. Is that happening? Yes. Is that the prior happen? applicant? The prior applicant has come. They no, no, no. Asked what I'm saying money. that, um, for example, if they have started the business, if the Correct. business, if if the project will cost fifty thousand dollars, sure. So they're starting of fifteen thousand, which cool. where we give like either twenty or fifty or seven thousand. Okay. But they can't find the the remainder of the money, yeah. so the project fell. Correct. Have you guys experienced? Yes, the, the I have not. The CRA has. Mm -hmm. um, there was a business that um, they we gave the money, um, and they were not able to complete the job, and they left. We are um, going after them legally. We have sent them um, letters. I don't know what the status of that is, but that applicant left. But I'm and glad that we didn't give them the entire give, amount of money. money. We did not give them the entire amount. We didn't give any money. We did not give any money. Okay, um, but ba but basically, what does happen is you have an applicant who runs across unforeseeable issues, whether it's unexpected change orders, and they come back to us and they say, "I didn't know this was going to happen. I need the CRA's help." This the prior applicant, um, because of these unexpected issues, he's going over the amount. We had the same thing with the Mocha Cafe with the fire. El Kiosco, I think. I'm something sorry. Like El Kiosco, I, I El Kiosco like has come twice. Unexpected issues. Uh, it's it's difficult for us to predict. Uh, although, and this is why at times, although we have rules in place, the we may need to break these waivers. We may need to waive because of these unforeseeable uh, issues and circumstances here. And I think in this case, um, we've had that happen. The safeguard is, I don't know what her financial ability is. We, we don't ask for that information. However, whatever you approve, they have to spend their money first. Yeah, but shouldn't we, shouldn't we be asking those, those Absolutely. questions? I mean, rather than waiver, rather than give waivers to lessen our restrictions shouldn't we be more careful with the public dollar i'm telling you right now the project may be a beautiful one i wish i had a chance to study it because i just got the information at 1 30 today i've got questions about the financials i don't understand why there's a rush clearly that carvel area i, I don't know if she's going in the carvel or right next to it has been vacant for decades Nobody's going there. No, you, you, you know, I mean, <coughs> we know what's happening. I work on 7th Avenue. There's no rush. I don't understand why we don't slow down, get a bit more information, be sure that our money is going to, because if we're going to wave and dip into the pot to award more money, she's not just asking for 54, she's asking for 80,000. If we were to award either one of those 54, $80,000 thresholds, that's money that another business doesn't get. We should be making sure that these businesses are going to be open and not closing in three months, and now we're spending time and legal fees chasing after somebody. We need to get more restrictive with the money. I, I don't understand why this is so loosey-goosey. Uh, there's no financials in this packet, and it's rushed. There's no need to rush at this point, in my opinion. Um, uh, last question I have is regarding the advertisement of this, uh, this item. It was advertised for fewer than 24 hours. Is that legally okay? Uh, my understanding is it was advertised for at least 24 hours. Um, I had called CRA staff when I was advised on Monday that this item was going to be on the advisory committee agenda um, to ensure that they uh, posted it in the city hall lobby at least 24 hours before this meeting. Um, typically, I would advise, again, being prudent 48 hours, but 24, you know, is, is okay. And it was um, amended on the website, I understand. This morning. No. Yes. Not this morning. <coughs> Since yesterday, it was amended on 
on the website. What time yesterday? Do I don't know. I'm, the one, I'm not the one who did the amendment, but uh, early in the morning. I could see if this was an emergent situation, if there was something seriously going on that we needed 24 hours. Less than 48, barely 24 is unforgivable for me. I would love, I want to see this entire area improved. I'm there every single day. I've never met Ms. Lozama, so, she, you know, my best guess is that she put together a great product. I'm not comfortable that we're rushing it, that we're granting waivers, and it's not just one waiver like at MOCA or one waiver like at another business, <coughs> it's multiple waivers. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the number of waivers, I'm uncomfortable with the financials, and I'm uncomfortable with the rush, so I won't be voting in favor tonight. Commissioner Marcellus? I, th I think I know Carvel High Swim, that place. It myself, at a certain time, in 1996, I tried to rent that place. I remember that's how long that this place been vacant. It's for a long period of time. I really like to see that place renovated. I really like the Seventh Avenue corridors have some new looks on it. But there is a problem. I just received this thing right now at the meeting. And I think it's unfair to us and <coughs> by doing so. And uh, like Mr. Galvin said, he never know Mrs. Lozama. I know her. <coughs> I know she used to have some great beauty salon business, and my ex-wife used to go there <laughs> and get the, you know, very beautiful and well represented, and she's very professional. I know her for a long time, too. Really, I will. I love to vote for this thing, but I think I need some more time. Based on the principle, I think this thing should be deferred for the next meeting, and I will be glad to go over it, and takes time, and... I think, like I said, I love Seven Avenue to be renovated, and if I <coughs> decided yes, it's okay, I will vote for. But uh, for now, I think that we should decide this item for next meeting. If that's a motion to continue to Com February, I'll Com second it. No, Commissioner, not, Commissioner, not a motion. <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Blen, I like to vote on the motion because I want to continue it too. It says not a motion. Did you hear that, I'll Commissioner Blen? I'll, I'll make the motion to continue. To you don't have the floor right now. He had the I'll floor. He's done. Floor so, okay, Commi Commissioner Stereo. Um, guys, can you? You're not playing. Commissioner Stereo. This is in my district. You can't take the floor from me. Commissioner Stereo. You can't take the floor from me. Commissioner Stereo. You cannot take the floor. from Commissioner Stereo. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. You're being arbitrary and irrational. Um. Well, I, I think this is one of the things I did talk to the uh, the the director earlier regarding this project. Um, I knew that was coming, <coughs> and you guys know I have been in this council. The mayor Burns knows how much that I invest in my district, and how hard that I work to make sure that not only the residents but we have good, vibrant business in the city, and finally. We're getting 7th Avenue together with Pro Tropical. Look what happened with uh, uh, Ken, the, the Burger King there, which I, I, I'm starting going there right now. <laughs> I go there too. Um, but <laughs> it is so unfortunate when staff fail to do their job. And it aggravates me because it makes us look bad, and it, it's really discouraged people to come and work in the city. If we're not giving them free money, they wouldn't have no business coming in here. From what I understand, as uh, Councilman Marcelli said, that I, I know Mrs. Rosama for a long time. She's a very good friend of mine. His brother is very prominent in the community. Ed Lowe's, for those of you who don't know, in the Haitian radio. So um, it's not just because that I know her, but when I look at it, which I talk to her about it, I, as a woman, I would love to have something like this in 7th Avenue. I went, I think, Monday, yesterday, no, that was Friday, to a beauty salon. I think it was, it was not a beauty express, but it was a nail express. I would call it that way because I don't remember uh, the name of the business. Where they have about 12 different stations. People are coming and doing their nail. They have massage. But it's on the east side of, of the, the city, which is great. I go there. I would love to have something like this on 7th Avenue. Not like I'm talking bad about what we have right now on 7th Avenue. We do have some beauty salon. We do have some, some uh, uh, nail tech 
on on se- on Seventh Avenue, but not as vibrant or well put together as what I'm seeing right now. And again, I knew Scott specifically was gonna get upset about it. Although that I never thought that he was gonna vote for it, but still, that I knew because we. I mean, not me, not we. You guys are staff. And I hate to badmouth staff like this because you guys are actually working for us. And you know, whenever that I have something that's not going well, I go to your office and I promise all of you not to come up here to disrespect you or to treat you like a kid. But you guys are not giving us any other choice. Why we this... I heard about this project. We kind of talk about this project up here last month, I think. The mayor bring it up, why, what happened, he heard about the project. Um, two months ago, we did talk about it for two months. So that's me, the applicant has been working with you guys for more than two months or about three months. There is no reason. No reason whatsoever, because when the last time that I talked to you, I said, oh, what happened to the project that the mayor was talking about? You said, yeah, I'm working with the lady because she didn't know that she was supposed to uh, present a certain things before the, the, the advisory board. You were working with her. But I knew that was supposed to present it. You guys knew it was supposed to present it to us. Why is it at the last minute that it's making it seem like something is happening? Here's we have a person that's actually spending money from what you told me. She's paying the place, is it she? Uh, she they have a contract, she has contract. a contract, she is paying the place every month. And here we are, supposed to be people that be responsible to help the community, to help our businesses. Each time that we have someone come in paying for the places, now if we, we, we're gonna send it for another month. So that's when she's gonna, by the time she has to be do permitting, I'm assuming, um, dealing with all the issues, it's gonna take us like, take her probably a month or two months behind. And this is not her fault. And I'm sure that she did not give you guys the papers today. If she did, you had no business to receive it from her. Why we didn't, if you guys had it even yesterday, you take you, if she went to, uh, before the advisory board yesterday. So why we didn't re- they didn't receive it yesterday? There have to be some sense of urgency, some respect, not only to this council but to the people that we are serving. It's 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 it, it, it just sad because I want to vote for it. I want to close my eyes to vote for it because I want to see something in Seventh Avenue. I really do. But you, I don't have, I don't even have an argument to fight back because that staff not doing the job, and this happened so many times. I got to be on the papers. I got to interview. Why? Because staff failed to do their job to check what they're supposed to check. I supposed to be the one that go out there and says, "Did you bring the papers on time, Scott? Did you receive yours? Because I have a project on seven that I really want. I want this to happen." So what, what do I do? What do I do? So do we, do we punish the applicants because of lack of leadership, because of lack of, what, professionalism? What do we do? Do we call for a special meeting? Do we, what do we do? We cannot afford to disrespect our community that way. And this, I'm really extremely upset about this tonight. It, to me, it just like make me feel so little, so small. Because I'm here, we're supposed to be here to serve. If someone actually have been working with the city for three months, prepared a sort of a nice uh, uh, a thing presented to you guys, the one thing that you fail to do, give it to us that we don't want to supposed to vote for it. Because of that, this person is gonna have to wait one more month, not to be able to proceed with her business. Because that staff didn't do the job, what should we do? Fire all of you? I surely don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm, 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 I'm just making a, a, a I'm, just a, a friendly, a friendly uh, um, 
I, I really want to to defer it, but I'm asking uh, uh, um, my colleague of, of my colleagues up here to be sensitive to this applicant that has been working for the past three months and has been paying rent. Either that we decided not to give it to her, then she decided what she's gonna do, or we we gave her either we call for an emergency meeting uh, within this week, or we voted on it tonight. I'm not pressuring you to vote it tonight because. I have respect that you should re receive it, but what I'm asking for us to actually call for the emergency meeting either tomorrow, then for we can address this meeting. At least we'll know that we're not giving it to her or we're giving it to her. It's a disgrace. I really don't appreciate it. Well, uh, My just, ahead, just uh, one second. I mean, just to be clear, um, we all have known about this project. We have for the last a uh, couple months it I was it was just give me one second I, but to be to, i'm not gonna let you say that okay. i knew about it yeah but i didn't, I didn't if know you about guys either. talked about it and you knew what you were referring to i sure okay. didn't i'd never heard uh miss lazama's name seen it in print or seen any of these documents nor heard about <coughs> anything happening at the carvel property period we didn't so. have it in print but we had discussed we had a long discussion about it when I think when the same when the same, the same former same request, same request came same before agenda. us and there was another lady from French restaurant I think came before us and then the mayor mentioned so what happened uh -huh. to this uh, um, to this uh, uh, project which the this project actually went before the advisory board when was that two months ago yeah. so because that she didn't have the proper paperwork and I I think that staff she met with staff staff did not advise her what she really needs which i'm not blaming stuff <coughs> on that part it should have been her job to find out what she wants right. but uh adv the advisory board um tell her that okay to go back and meet with staff to get the proper people to come talk to her because the mayor bring it up we discuss it and ask what's going on unless they actually give us what was going on what happening the city manager said okay he will be working with her to see exactly so we did a long discussion with that i clearly was this. lost not knowing what you're talking about and i'll have to make sure i ask more questions but i honestly so, didn't that's the that's my biggest concern I'm, here I'm, i didn't know about this i'm, I'm very this i'm very and, and i refuse uh, to continue to um staff have to get the act together i refuse to continue to uh, punish the, the 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 constituent or business owners for lack of professionalism of staff I, 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 I'm a, I refuse to do so. Yeah. We have well, to take our responsibility. Well, you know, it's in your district. Um, basically, um, Commissioner uh, Marcellus, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, you want to vote for it, but you, you heard what the Commissioner uh, Sterling said. So, um, me, I'm, I mean, it's been too long. I mean, basically, you know, staff went out there and found money that basically has been sitting there for years and now something is finally about to happen on northwest Ave seventh avenue and we're going to delay it. so um so commissioner marcellus what what do you want to do i mean you're the one that came up with the issue that you know you know everybody and you know you want to vote for it but you know it come at the last minute but i know it's been around for a couple months so um you heard what the commissioner this listen four said since we know is not that even though you know Ms. Mrs. Lozama for paying rent right now is not such an emergency like tomorrow can we postpone it for the next a uh, deferred for the next council meeting okay. on the uh, two weeks from now at least we will we have don't have we don't have meetings uh, every month we only have meetings yeah meetings. once a month but can we, we make that meeting up can we make it happen? That's, that's up. That's up. That's that. up to. That's uh, up to um, to this board right now. Because as I said, um, I know about the project. I sit with the city manager. I even speak, uh, uh, talk to the the um, Mr. Zakowitz regarding the recommendation. What was going on? How does it feel about the waivers? I mean, I I know about it. It's in my district. I really appreciate the fact that you guys should concern about it um i'm I, I know about it i'm ready to vote on it so that's up to guys what is it that you need that we will be providing in two weeks that's up to you but listen to that when you guys start talking about this this item i was completely lost okay okay because i did not have a chance to go over this thing at all 
And it, the ball is on your court. So okay. however that you are can't force you guys to vote on something. Okay, like and uh, if you guys want and just make a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion for, for the next council meeting. We can have a CRA meeting and to discuss this item and to vote for on it. I'll second that. January twenty second? Yes. The day after President Obama takes office for the second time? Yes. Yeah. Anyone wishes to work it or no? Hearing none. I don't pass. Um, just, any. Just to clarify, Mr. Chairman, so we will be having a special CRA board meeting Correct. on January 22nd at 5 30 in the afternoon. Since it's only one item was not passed, it was continued. Since it's, on, since it's only one item, <coughs> can we have it at 6 <laughs> 30? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. Um, we, we just need to agree on a time so when we publish the notice, it's I'll second proper. the motion for 6.30. It's only one item, and we already heard most of the... Okay. 6.30 it is. Okay. Okay, um, agenda item three. The only problem that I see with the dates of meetings, um, some of you who are not running may not be aware of that. Into the record. Go ahead. Um, Mayor, I'm sorry, board chairman proposed item agenda three agenda item three proposed 2013 calendar dates for cra board meetings okay may 14th is election day i don't think any of us would be sitting here having a cra meeting especially those that are running for office so um may 14th i would recommend that either it's rescheduled for another special day uh maybe because may 14th i guess if there's a runoff is two weeks after that and that goes up to may 28th Canceling. May 28th, I'm back to Andre Pierre. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys want to do with May 14th? I mean, yeah. I, I don't Cancel. see any reason why we should be sitting here having a meeting when we have an election going yeah, on. You have to delete it. Plus, the canvassing board would be sitting here at about, you know, 5.30 getting prepared. Right, Mr. C. Clark? What time you guys get here? That's correct, man. Okay. So, is it going to be canceled? Okay, any problems with the rest of the dates? I don't have to worry about, to, you know, basically all I'm worrying about is February, March, April. I don't <laughs> have to worry about June. So um, it's up to you guys. Mr. Mayor, can you actually tell Ms. Lozama what just happened? Oh, sure. How are you, Mrs. Lozama? I'm fine. Okay. Everyone. Um, basically, there, there was a, um, just, a, just a little setback but i mean you you believe in god you know setbacks sometimes no happen no so no as 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 long as we won the war um mm -hmm. it's rescheduled for january 22nd at 6 30 and it looks like you know um you have four votes um we'll see what happened on that day um it looks like they need more time to review it okay. um so thank you so much a pleasure to thank see you, you here in this great city you know you're looking good um you look like 10 years younger from the time that i met you uh, a while ago and um you know i'm still married so oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one question um, yes since you you press 24 uh, january 22nd, 22nd and uh, is this something that you need from me mr scott my biggest concern outside of staff rushing this in front of us three hours ago mm -hmm. uh, is some financial background just to make sure that when we make a large investment you're able to uh, you know be there for the long haul mm -hmm. so I'm just uh, interested in whatever you can provide the city manager uh, we can like talk afterward about what that specifically it's, it's might be about to too. yeah right when I say we yeah. I mean no, we no, through no, the her, manager. She's asking okay. yeah to, to, to okay. just see what kind of financial okay. stability okay. there is. Right. okay no problem. okay thank you very much thank you, sure. thank you so much okay yeah. are you doing haircuts still Everything. Everything? Everything. Good. You're going to love this project. Good, good. <laughs> Thank you. I'll come by and get my Ted Kali. <laughs> um, so, motion was made to uh, cancel. Me. Excuse me. May 14th. Motion to cancel. Maybe you haven't read it. They have it. Oh, okay. We have it. You have a budget? Yeah. We yeah. have it. It's in the plan. I looked okay. at it. Thank oh. you. Okay, motion was made to cancel May 14th. Second. Oh, no one made the motion? Who made I the motion? Move to cancel May 2nd, or May 14th. May 14th. I made it. Motion has been made. It was second. Second. Anyone who's there, I can know. Hearing none. Uh, motion passed. Um, 
no reports from CRA coordinator, no report from CRA director, no report from CRA attorney, no report from the secretary. Um, motion to adjourn. Salute. We'll see you guys in 25 minutes. Thank you so much. Okay.